Jesus had many disciples. He once sent out 72 of them. After his resurrection, he appeared to a group of over 500. But as we heard, he gave precisely 12 a foundational role. His choice clearly echoed the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. He didn't intend to found an entirely new and different Israel. His choice spoke of continuity as well as newness. For Jesus himself is the ultimate foundation for the one city of God that exists throughout history. He's head of the one body to which belong those who hoped in him before he came and we who follow him now. The patriarch's foundational role, the foundational roles of the 12, of the Old Testament prophets, and of the New Testament prophets who helped expound Jesus's meaning and complete the scriptures, all these are a sharing in an overflow from Jesus's role as foundation. He exercised that role especially in his sacrifice, which obtained for all history the gift of the spirit who animates the body. That gift was manifested dramatically at Pentecost. Hence, before recounting that foundational event, Luke repeats the list of the 11 and records how Matthias replaced Judas Iscariot. There had to be precisely 12 apostles when the church began to be visibly Catholic. So we have just heard Paul tell Gentile Christians they've been welcomed into the family, the city, the temple that was built up through the prophets of old and at the time Paul wrote was being built up through the ministry of prophets as well as the apostles. One of the apostles we honor today, Jude Thaddeus, speaks but once in the Gospels, the other Simon not at all. Maybe Simon preached later in Egypt and Jude in Mesopotamia and they were martyred together in Persia but maybe both died in peace at Edessa. It can seem odd that we know so little about people so foundational. In fact, that's how it should be. The ministry of forming disciples always was personal. Only the tip of that iceberg can appear in scripture. Jesus formed his friends, his disciples, his apostles personally, charging them to form others. The work goes on. People are formed as disciples in the home, in one-to-one conversations, in classrooms, in the confessional, as well as by church documents, books, and sermons that are sometimes live-streamed. The crowd, we have just heard, sought to touch Jesus because power came forth from him. It wasn't just information the apostles passed on. They passed on the sacraments Jesus established and ordained further ministers by the laying on of hands. Thus, Jesus' healing touch reaches down through the centuries to the sick and the dying, from the apostles' bishops' inherit authority to anoint and consecrate new disciples with chrism to become stones in God's temple, which is the Eucharistic community, where by the power Jesus gave the apostles, his sacrifice is continually offered. Few celebrations of the sacraments make the history books, 
but in all these personal encounters, the Spirit is crafting disciples into God's eternal dwelling.